on this episode of Ice Pilots NWT. Their phones just went dead, They're like this, the power's kicking off. Set for one. Buffalo Airways races to respond to an emergency call. It's exciting, gets the blood pumping. Whoa, whoa. We can't leave it like that. This ain't gonna fly, boys. Three ramp hands fight to get ahead. Oh my God. And into the cockpit. Hang on to your hat, boy. Late January and minus 30 here in Hay River Northwest Territories. Dawn is still hours away, but at the Hay River Crew House, Jeremy Dow's daily grind has already begun. Oh, shit. Jeremy has been working as the Hay River Ramp Hand, or Rampy, for four frigid months. Uh, 4.45 in the morning, it's my job to start the cars. Or put another way, over a hundred frosty wake-up calls. God, gotta get the other one going too. It's too damn cold for this. It's not exactly the glamorous pilot's life he dreamed about in flight school. It's too damned early. Again. Like it is every day. That's it. People keep taking the big bowls first. Hay River is on the southern edge of Great Slave Lake. Buffalo's daily DC-3 flight to Yellowknife leaves here sharp at 7.30 each morning and gets put to bed by 7 each night. I love my job. If it weren't for this, I'd be bored. It makes a long day for Jeremy, lugging freight, prepping the plane, and making cargo deliveries in between. Oh, okay. 36 in Yellowknife. Just like every other rampy, he's already a licensed pilot. They all put up with the brutal conditions, long hours, and minimal pay for one reason. Find something that old, that big, as your first job? Hell yeah. Every Rampy wants to get behind the controls of Buffalo's fleet of vintage prop liners. When I talked to my uh, friends, they said, man, you are getting a lifetime opportunity to fly that aircraft. And each one has a favorite. I'm gonna start flying DC-3 and DC-4. I dreamt about it. I definitely, as soon as I saw them, I knew I wanted to fly them, especially things like the Electra. The C-46 is faster than the DC-3, so that's one of the reasons why I prefer the C-46. More power and making more noises too. To get a place on the flight deck, the rookies need to impress one man above all, company owner Buffalo Joe McBrien and he knows exactly what he's looking for. Your gumption, your ambition, your initiative, your finesse, your charisma, whatever it takes, every day now it's up to you. You got the world by that tail and then you hang on and pull like shit, now you can do it. But don't stand by waiting for somebody to do it for you. If you do, you're in the wrong business. While working the ramp is grueling, it keeps these licensed pilots one step closer to the planes they hope to fly. But they're also expected to pull their weight off the tarmac. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in my new life as a courier. A recent arrival from Quebec, Audrey Marchand is anxious to move up the ladder. I want to be a pilot. I don't want to be a rampy. <laughs> And if that also means driving a van, she's gonna suck it up. I just have to prove them 
um, that I can do like everything that they, they can ask me to. Audrey has one big advantage. She works at the Yellowknife hangar in close contact with Buffalo headquarters. I'm doing great. While Audrey's burning rubber, Yeehaw! 200 kilometers away in Hay River, Jeremy could be left out in the cold, even after four months of paying his dues. The great part about loading the airplane is it's plus 30 in there and minus 30 out here. Try dressing for that. You can't. You either freeze your balls off outside or you roast them inside. There's your options. My balls are out of options. I've got about, you know, seven days a week, four months straight. That's a record or a law or something. If he's got any hope of moving ahead, Jeremy's got to get to Yellowknife. But first, he needs someone to handle the work in Hay River. So he's lined up an unusual replacement. Ramon Sravastava, direct from India. Got my license and just within two days I, I talked to Jeremy. He told me about Buffalo and I said, yeah, it's a good idea to join the Buffalo, right? He went through a bit of a temperature shock, certainly. <laughs> he's having a tough time adapting. He's pretty slight. I mean, he's, he's in good shape, he's just very small. If Ramon can hack it here, it will be Jeremy's best chance for promotion. But Ramon's also fighting a terrible homesickness for his native India. Everything is on my computer. <laughs> that's my dad, that's my mom, that's my sister, and that's my brother-in-law. That's my mom, actually. <laughs> I love her. I love her a lot. I miss her too much. That's my nephew, my, mom, my dad, and she is my would-be. Wow, oh, she's gorgeous. Thank you. She is gorgeous by heart, too. Ramon's having such a hard time, he won't even reveal just how tough it is to his family. To be very frank, I don't want to tell them exactly, like, in what situation. Sometimes, you know, you get, you, you get a little struggle with the weather and you are not feeling well, but you can't tell them everything, you know, just because they'll, they'll start thinking about you and probably it's not good for them, right? Same thing happened yesterday, actually. My mom, she started weeping and said, uh, it's enough now, I'll just come back. If Ramon's homesickness gets the better of him, Jeremy is looking at an indefinite job, run love, on the Hay River ramp. I love, I love my job, 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 I love my job. Back at Yellowknife headquarters, a much more urgent SOS is throwing Buffalo into overdrive. Oh, I got a call from the Power Corporation and none of it. And uh, in Rankin Inlet, I guess their generators went offline. Rankin Inlet, a mining village of 2,300 people on the northwestern shore of Hudson Bay, has lost power. Three of their four generators have failed. The community has declared a state of emergency. The one generator still running is allowing essential services like the health center to stay open. But residents must endure blackouts. No lights, no TVs, no ovens, and no heat. All they have is that one generator is their heart, the heart of the community. It basically, it's like your heart pumping blood to your system. So when that heart stops, you get desperate. You do what you have to do. So what's our tentative dispatch? One hour. One hour and counting. We're one of the few airlines up here that can at the drop of a hat, dispatch a plane within a few hours. You're good over there, Louis. Buffalo has one plane perfect for the job, the Douglas DC-4. NWT Power Corp, they build their generators to fit in the DC-4 because for the longest time it was the only plane that could move them. So They are built to just slide in the door. The DC-4's cargo door measures over 10 feet wide and six and a half feet tall. Only the four was designed as a 42-passenger transatlantic airliner in the late 1930s. Douglas built it with an unusually wide fuselage. Adapted for World War II, 
It became the C-54 Skymaster and hauled troops and armaments. Buffalo's DC-4 flew in the war. Today, it's got another important mission, but they have to move fast. It's uh, that kind of job, if you don't jump on it right away, you're gonna lose it to somebody else. Well, their phones just went dead. They're like, there's, the power's kicking on and off, so. Okay. With no time to lose, Buffalo pulls in one of their most trusted captains, Justin Simley. A lot of drums there, so. Oh, it's exciting, you know, we gotta get there and uh, get the gen set there and get the power on for these people, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting, gets the blood pumping. Justin has spent his entire career with Buffalo Airways. He started as the Hay River Rampy. This would be the airplane we're taking to Rankin Inlet. Uh, Me and Justin kind of grew up together here at Buffalo. You happy? He got in shit every day. Every day, there wasn't a day Justin was getting in shit. We got a great bunch of guys here. Everything runs pretty smooth, you know? There wasn't a day when he was getting a hard time from another Rampy, but he never ever quit. Um, yeah, we got fuel and drums. You got the refueling kit? I'll go get it. The plan calls for Justin and co-pilot Charles Lorty to fly the DC-4 to nearby Fort Simpson. There, they'll pick up two giant generators, then proceed to Rankin Inlet, 1,500 kilometers away. I wouldn't worry about sweeping it. It's just going to blow off on takeoff. Oh, there. Everybody at Buffalo stepped up. There's no real time to think of what ifs and, and how comes and why can't we do it or why can we do it. They do it. Yeah, Justin goes, grabs a sandwich, puts on his jacket, jumps in the airplane, and does his job. Oh, it looks great. You ready to go? Ready to go. Okay. Uh, mixture full red. Stand by. Except for one. This Buffalo DC-4 flew over a half century ago in the historic Berlin airlift, ferrying supplies into blockaded East Berlin. Today, it's flying to the rescue again. Yes, that's uh, actually pretty amazing to use an airplane that 50 years ago you used to be you know, overseas for a uh, Berlin airlift. And 60 years later, we're still uh, used uh, an airplane for the same purpose. It's not business right now, it's, uh, it's almost like an ambulance. But the wheels on this ambulance are about to come off. Coming up. Go back, go back, go. Whoa, whoa. We can't leave it like that. You won't leave it, Whoa. Hasn't fit. It's a make it or break it day for Buffalo Airways. Two delegates from the Turkish government are arriving in Yellowknife to seal a critical deal. And Director of Flight Operations Mike Hanley is anxious to make a good first impression. We've got representatives coming from Turkey to finalize the contract negotiations with Buffalo Airways and the CL-215s uh, for the sale and purchase of these aircraft. The global recession has forced owner Joe McBrien to sell two CL-215 water bombers. The 215s are big flying boats that scoop water off lakes and dump it on forest fires. This is one of the type. This is not the actual airplane. It'll be identical to this airplane. This $7 million deal for the 215 water bombers is crucial to Buffalo's bottom line during these tough economic times. You can kind of get you down if uh... If you, if you just keep watching the newspapers on this recession, they're talking about or the depression. We still owe money on the hangar. We still owe money on the 215s themselves and uh, various other things. This will definitely breathe a little bit of fresh air and a little bit of life into our morale, into our people. Turkey deal for Buffalo Airways is huge. It's, it's going to save us. And Technically, we do need saving. Mike Hanley is on the front lines as Buffalo's one-man welcoming committee. I 
doing? You guys um, for Buffalo Airways? Yes. Yes, how you doing? Fine, thank you. Good, good, welcome to your life. The Turkish delegates are lawyer Yasar Ozturk and aviation inspector Orhan Kandir. So we're not too cold? Oh, too cold. Too cold? Uh, you get used to it after a while. While Mike brushes up on international relations, Buffalo's cargo manager Kelly Jurasevic and her niece and assistant Janelle Glenn have their own special assignment. Turkey time. I gotta get Arnie's hair cut and make sure he doesn't wear a Harley t-shirt today. <laughs> so, we're off to cut his hair, pluck his eyebrows, pull some nose hairs, wax them. You know. Joe has asked Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader to take the Turkish delegates out for dinner tonight. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so it's makeover time. Well, they, you know, they spent a lot of money on these two airplanes, so, and we haven't got it yet, so we better get spruced up a little bit, and wine and dine them so we can get paid. Arnie's a key part of the contract. He'll lead the crew flying the 215s across the North Atlantic, then stay on to train the Turkish pilots. Well, there's that barber downtown where Kelly does just good a job, so... You are one sexy man, huh? She's such a bullshitter, eh? But first, he needs to help close the deal. Arnie's got his hair cut. Anybody can tell that something's gonna happen. Be that or someone died. Across town, would-be pilot Audrey is finishing up her courier run and living by the first rule of a rampy. Never stop moving. The ramp in my book should always be at work. Um, they should always have work on their mind. To become a successful rampion is to basically erase everything in your mind about being a pilot and you have a job. If the job is getting frost fighter for the airplane, that's your job. I still, to this day, I can't understand why they would put themselves through what they do. But I also understand that they have to. And if they don't, someone else will. Audrey's fresh attitude and enthusiasm are threatening to eclipse Jeremy's months of hard work. I'm setting personal records, all right. Yeah, definitely hours worked in a week and in a month. And I probably just cleared the record of, you know, hours worked in a year in the last four months, which is probably not good, but it happens. Big airplane. Yet, Buffalo Joe has singled Audrey out as the rampy most likely to climb the ladder. Yeah, to see how it works. I, I told him that, you know, she'd, she'd move through the system as quick as she can. The next step up is flight attending. It might not sound like a great promotion, but at Buffalo, it's the key step between working the ramp and flying the plane. Now, once they're on the airplane, then they start to learn. They learn to navigate, they learn different areas of the north, different towns, different airstrips, and, and they learn the environment that we operate in while they're flight attending. All the rampies know that whoever is trained next as a flight attendant will get first crack at the co-pilot seat. In Hay River, Jeremy's heard the rumor that Audrey might be getting that chance ahead of him. Grumble, grumble, grumble. There's a possibility that I get pretty screwed out of a promotion. So, yeah, life's a bitch. This news is dragging him down and affecting his work. Today, my brain is not working right. So today is going really terribly. Messing up where I put freight and what order I deliver it all in. Forgetting pieces. It is just crappy. <laughs> that sounded expensive. Jeremy's only hope is to get himself to Yellowknife so he can get an equal shot at that promotion. But that means new Rampy Ramon has to be ready to handle the work in Hay River. We have two frost fighters, so that weighs probably around uh, 700, 800 uh, pounds for sure. I got a little pissed off, okay, moving that uh, frost fighter. But then I thought like people did it, this thing right here. And they were managing this, this thing alone. So why not I? The physical demands of the job are taking their toll. Ramon is running out of gas. Two hundred kilometers away, the DC-4 is pouring it on. 
the remote village of Rankin Inlet has been suffering a power outage since last night. Captain Justin Simley and his crew are on an emergency mission to pick up two generators in Fort Simpson and rush them to Rankin. How are you? On the tiny Fort Simpson airstrip, Justin meets the crew from the local power company. Hey man, I'm Justin. They've got to get both massive generators onto the plane and in the air as soon as possible. There's no time to waste. Probably done. We can start putting stuff in. Uh... Good thing Justin learned to hustle on the Hay River ramp. So we're off to the right. What's your heaviest piece here? This one? Uh, here we get another... 15,246 pounds. Looks pretty good. We're just uh, organizing the load. It's got to go in in a certain order. First, some minor modifications. Uh, it's going to be pretty close fit, so uh, we're just having them take some, some parts and pieces off the top of the gen set. The generators have been designed to fit through the cargo doors of the DC-4, but that doesn't include the protruding parts on the top, the muffler and the eye bolts. We're just trying to get the, the eye bolts off the top so it'll fit through the door, but they're bolted underneath. In Rankin Inlet, the one functioning generator is barely holding up. The limited power available is being rotated throughout the hamlet for one hour periods. Just enough time to pump a bit of heat. Rankin Inlet is a remote place to begin with, and if you take away the power, it's kind of like uh, they just disappear in the darkness. The clock is ticking at the Fort Simpson airstrip in the Northwest Territories. Buffalo Captain Justin Simley must fly two giant generators to the isolated settlement of Rankin Inlet. The tiny hamlet is in the middle of a power blackout, with the January deep freeze getting deeper by the minute. The generators protruding eye bolts and mufflers are torched off. Now to load them in but it's still going to be a tight fit. Whoa. Slowly. Can't see you. Stop. They can't find the proper angle to fit the full length of the generator into the plane. Justin's got to find a way. Straighten your wheels first, please. I know this is frustrating for everybody. Bear with us here. We have a reputation for finishing the jobs we start, and uh, and that's our intention every time. You're gonna swing it right into the fucking door. Yeah. Uh, not only does a job like this affect our reputation, uh, a job like this can bring in uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, like we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. So we gotta make sure we get this job done. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Come on in. It's grabbing on the floor. Can he go up some? Okay. Come forward a little bit. Three inches, he says. And if he backs up, we can tilt it. Our problem is that we don't have enough of the generator in the airplane for him to back out. We can't leave it like that. Okay, go through. Back it out. Okay. Back out, back out, back out. Whoa, whoa. You won't clear the corner here. If you turn here, it doesn't fit. Unbelievable. How much room on the back end? He's got an inch. Cinch? Yeah. This ain't gonna fucking fly, boy. We can't get her in the fucking door here. Not this way. With night falling, the man who was trained to always finish the job is forced to make a difficult call. I hate this, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm done. I'm done with this generator tonight. I think we all are. Yeah. But there's still hope. A second, smaller generator. With the setting sun sending Arctic temperatures even lower, the people of Rankin Inlet are in for a cold, dark night if Buffalo doesn't deliver. At the only French restaurant in Yellowknife, Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader and his new haircut have their own job to do. 
Arnie and his wife and another Buffalo Airways couple are whining and dining Orhan and Yasar from Turkey, potential buyers of Buffalo's two water bombers. Well, we didn't know the representatives and, you know, the people from Turkey are, they like a little bit of class, so it's just a sales, a sales pitch type thing, you know, make them feel better and then things go easier, you know, with the sale and that. You might expect company president Joe McBride to be there when $7 million are on the table, but he'd rather have Arnie handle the PR. They'll be just quizzing each other on the, the cultures of Yellowknife in Canada and what's it going to be like when we get over to your country. So they'll be comparing notes, giving back for tonight is when everybody is super polite. And what are you going to have for supper? What I'm going to have, bologna sandwiches. <laughs> Do you think we got fresh bread? No, I checked it at noon. We got day old. No, I have no plan on being with these people tonight. I'd like them to, to meet the people they're going to be working with. The old man, he just went home, opened up a new case of bologna, made himself a sandwich, sitting there in his boxers, talking about freaking chrome parts on a mercury. Arnie's task is to smooth things over before tomorrow's meeting to finalize the sale. A little bit of whiskey or something helps, you know, good supper. Some wine makes things go better. Do your honor. Yeah. The stage is set. Tomorrow, it's all up to Joe to close the deal. And that's what worries people. You are no more Hay River guy. You are now Yellowknife guy, right? In Hay River, Jeremy's opportunities may be opening up. Yeah, exactly. He's been called to work the ramp at Buffalo HQ in Yellowknife tomorrow. Finally, a chance to show what he's capable of. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Definitely something's wrong just because who kid that thing, it wasn't doing anything. It's Ramon's chance to prove he has what it takes to handle the Hay River ramp on his own. I worry, man. I worry. It's gonna work tomorrow for sure. Tonight, Jeremy intends to turn this Hindu vegetarian into a true man of the north. Yeah, so where to put the coin? With a little hunting trip. <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> here we go. If Ramon can make it here, he might just stick it out. And Jeremy could make the permanent leap to Company HQ in Yellowknife. <laughs> what other people are saying about me, like, any idea? Like, with my today's performance, like, till now performance, like... Still need to work on hustle. Still need to work on? Hustle. Like, working faster. Yeah, that's for sure, but... I know you it's know, developing a technique, but you also got to posture your ass. He helped me. He helped me from inside out. I'm very thankful to Jeremy. Like, he always supported me, and you know somebody is there to take care of you. In, in absence of your parents or friends. Jeremy's even helping him fit in with the Hay River locals. Jesus, every Buffalo boy should have a dirty hooker. Wow. Yeah. There you go. No, this is for you, my friend. <laughs> you got to drink it. Thank you. <laughs> does that taste like the last dirty hooker you had? No, it doesn't. I have sat here many a Friday night with, with men as good and or better as you. Look at that. And have said to me, I've got to get up at 4.30 you put the blame on it. And, and they kept drinking until three. Yeah. He's motivating you. He's motivating you. If they had enough balls to make it from the bar down to this table, <laughs> they're Buffalo boys. After you call them boys, no, they're not, not men. Not no, yet. no, they're not yet. They're not men. It's, it's not up to us to call them men. It's up to Joe to call them men. <laughs> Tomorrow, Ramon will find out just how much of a Buffalo man he can be. After struggling all afternoon in Fort Simpson to load a massive generator onto the DC-4, Captain Justin Simley is finally calling it quits. Uh, I'm done. I'm done with this generator tonight. I think we all are. But he's still determined to come to the rescue of Rankin Inlet. Justin is confident that the second smaller generator will fit. We're going to take everything else and uh, go to Rankin Inlet tonight. Oh yeah, we're going to Rankin tonight. Well, uh, communities got no power. They just quit because you think might not be able to do the job. You look for solutions. Eh? You want them to the left? Go left. The financial reality of this mission weighs on Buffalo General Manager Mikey McBrien. It is a very critical contract, but technically every contract we have is pretty critical. 
Our main objective was very simple. Uh, get the power, get the lights back on in Rankin Inlet. But the second generator isn't cooperating. This one's higher than the other one by a quarter of an inch. And a quarter of an inch is exactly the size of a recent modification to the plane. We put a beefier floor in the DC-4, and uh, the floor had been raised a fraction of an inch. I guess if, if there's no fucking room, there's no room, man. Our reputation is based on our ability to get the job done. So we'd like to get the job done. Well, if it won't go, it won't go. Because it simply ain't going to go in, eh? It's this way That's the way it is sometimes, just a fraction of an inch between success and failure. And Mikey calls with even more frustrating news. Oh, you talked to him. Who is Power Corp or none of it Power Corp? Tell him. A competing company located another generator and is on the way to rank him. It's done. All the Buffalo boys can do now is go home. We're all a little disappointed, but uh, we'd done everything we could uh, to make it happen, and uh, it didn't work out. So. They did their job impeccably, on time, as best they could, but the piece would not fit in the airplane. They did as much as they can, and that's real life. That's what happens. That's not a Hollywood ending. Not only did they fail to come through, they lost a contract that would have helped to fatten the company's books in these lean times. A new day dawns in Hay River, Northwest Territories. Jeremy's getting the chance to work in Yellowknife today and to prove that Audrey isn't the only Rampy who deserves a promotion. You're out of sight and out of mind down here, which isn't a good thing. You really want to be impressing those you're working for. And there aren't that many chances to do that. You don't really get to demonstrate how hard you're working as well as you could maybe in Yellowknife. Ramon will be left behind to handle Hay River Rampy duties on his own for the first time. The DC-3 and Jeremy are away. And Ramon is off and running solo. With the first of several courier runs. In Yellowknife, Jeremy is slogging it out on the ramp with renewed passion and working with the full range of the Buffalo fleet. Big planes rather than the little DC-3s. Get your momentum up to you through the drift. Jeremy gets instructions from C-46 co-pilot Scott Blue. Um, and then this is just going on the left-hand side, on top of all the wood. Yeah. It's three straps, you can just undo it, put it on top, zing, zing, zing. The workload is much heavier than in Hay River. Where am I hooking it up to, boss? Okay. Things are a little frantic, um, mostly because I've never prepared a 46 before at the same time. So I'm just going to focus on this one until they tell me to go the hell over there. A little more hustling, and the 46 is ready to go. Jeremy's experience is paying off, and Audrey is nowhere in sight. She's been given the day off, but she's not taking it easy. Audrey's keeping fit to stay competitive with the guys. 
If I'm not strong enough to push something or to pull something because it's too heavy or to carry something, I'll find another way to do it. But I will really try to do it on my own instead of asking someone else. Back in Hay River, Ramon has no one to ask for help. He's on his own. You know, I was trying to drive one uh, forklift today. That's the first time, actually, I tried putting that uh, big 600-pound box in my van. So far, Ramon is rising to the challenge. It was heavy, and especially, you know, you have to be very precise because that machine, it doesn't want you to, you know, run like any heavy thing. Just go with smoothly. It's, it's like a tiny bit of changes on the controls and then drop it off slowly. I was trying myself to be very good on that one. You have to deal with hard machines. You have to prove yourself. But it's gonna be a little trickier than he thought. Uh, it should go and then we can close the door, right? Otherwise, clip it. Oh, it's heavy, man. In Hay River, Buffalo's new rampy, Ramon, is working on his own. His friend and mentor, Jeremy, has entrusted him with the Hay River duties for the first time. He's figured out the forklift enough to load up a 600-pound piece of cargo. Oh, it wasn't the proper lane. But then, the van doors won't close. The only option left is pure rampy can-do. Four time. Whatever I weigh myself. Jeremy's drilled into him that if he's going to make it here, he's got to step up and prove himself. If I'm not enough capable to handle their business, why well, they'll keep me, right? This kind of business, we do it. And that's how you have to handle it. So you have to be, you know, quite strong to handle that kind of thing. Task is done. Finally, Ramon feels like a real rampy. That 600 pound was challenge. That was a good thing actually, that motivated me. I can do it, I can lift it now. Back in Yellowknife, it's D-Day. Buffalo is about to close the $7 million sale of two CL-215 water bombers to Turkey. In a recession year, this deal is one bright light in a bleak financial forecast. Please extend a warm buffalo welcome. For God's sakes, don't say anything fucking stupid. <laughs> Actually, don't say anything. <laughs> 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 it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> Shut, please. <laughs> what you say? We're a bunch of animals or what? Joe's playing it cool. He's been in the aviation business for 40 years, and he's seen it all. But after buying and selling over 100 airplanes on a handshake, if you run down the center of the freeway long enough, you're going to get run over, and it doesn't come back to haunt you, and all of a sudden, one will bite you. And this deal is one of the most critical of his career. Joe oh. McBrien. Oh. Rod McBrien. Oh. All right, nice to meet you. Direct your maintenance. What's your name? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi, I'm Hello. legal consultant. Legal consultant. Lawyer. 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 I have all the faith in him, but he can f up stuff sometimes, eh? This is Debbie. You talk to Debbie on the phone? Nice Debbie Dwyer? Hello, nice yeah. to meet you. This is the lawyer. This is my favorite. <laughs> this, this guy I go to like the most. He can, he can say the most oddest things, and, and uh, maybe they're not the most uh, socially appropriate phrases. Just before the meeting begins, the Turks duck outside for a smoke. 
Now I gave my Canadian cigarettes, see what they think of it. Tell them to take big sucks and knock them on his ass because they're really strong compared to theirs. Eh? So he's probably laying out in the snow up there somewhere. Maybe he'll find them. Jeez, I don't know. Yeah. I think Europeans have been smoking a lot longer than we have. That's <laughs> it. Okay. 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 Finally, everyone is assembled. Okay. The financial fate of Buffalo Airways is on the line. It's time for Joe to get down to business. Yeah, the one thing about business is uh, that the smile kind of goes away uh, when you start talking business because it's serious to him. That is not part of this agreement. This agreement today, we buy, sell airplanes. You're right, because I'm here only <laughs> to get this bill of sale yeah. and to tell them that, okay, we have it, send money, and then you... Money in the bank. Music to Joe's ears. Deliver paper to him, he delivers papers to you tomorrow morning. Airplanes are starting to be tanked. Uh -huh. So I sign here? Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll shake hands with you. Yeah. The you. deal is done, but the work is far from over. Where are the first ones going to when we arrive? Three bases. Oh, there's three different bases? Okay. Preparing the planes and getting them across the North Atlantic to Turkey in the middle of winter will take everything Buffalo's got. Still to come, Ramon drives the ice road. Frozen water, right? I'll say, look at that, it's getting over the frozen water. It's crazy. Frozen lake. It's good. Energized by his morning smackdown with a 600 pound box, task is done. Ramon has been making record time on another Hay River courier run. He's handling the workload like a real rampy. For the first time, Ramon seems at home in the job and in the north. Definitely it's gonna be a good something, something new uh, in my life. Like I'm feeling more stronger as compared to when I was living in India. Ah, this door is totally frozen, man. So I'm living like a soldier's life. And today, he's going to experience another northern first. When I was in chatting with Jeremy, he told me like generally we fly, we drive over the frozen lake. So I told to my parents like I'm going to drive over the frozen lake. They got scared. What? Are you crazy? Look, we are just about to get into, into the frozen lake. Wow. See that? It's awesome. Just because now I'm over the water, man. <laughs> frozen water, right? I'll say, look at that, it's driving over the frozen water. It's crazy. It's awesome. It is awesome. I like this actually. I want to lay down here. It's awesome. It's like the frozen lake. It's good. Oh, somebody is spotting me. No homesickness now. Ramon has proved to himself that he's got what it takes to make it at Buffalo. For now. That evening, Buffalo's passenger flight rolls onto the Hay River ramp. Jeremy's back from Yellowknife and anxious to hear how Ramon handled things here. Oh, so how was your first day running Hay River, man? Good, man. Yeah. You got Smith and Simpson done today? Yep. It's all done now. He's working his butt off. And he's trying his darndest to fit in. It's working. Jeremy's encouraged. Later, at the Hay River Staff House. How's everything going on there? A call home to his family reveals just how much Ramon is adapting to the north. Well, I'm doing fine here. I'm definitely, you know, day by day, it's getting better here. Getting used to of the environment, weather. So it's not like today, temperature is minus around 30. So it's not that cold for sure. Ramon has caught that rampy spirit. <laughs> oh, he's making a serious one, eh? Good, huh? And for now, Jeremy's game plan is coming together. Start competing over who can make the best paper airplane. What is that? It's an easily modifiable airframe. Ramon could take over for him in Hay River. <laughs> That's a dart. I'm saying supersonic, man. That's not an airplane. It is. It's not an it's airplane. Rocket, man. It doesn't have it wings. Must take logic, yeah? okay. Moving to Yellowknife and becoming a Buffalo co-pilot could soon become a reality for Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes things have a way of unraveling. On the next episode of Ice Pilots NWT.
Buffalo races against the clock to turn two low-flying short-haul water bombers into transatlantic aircraft. Is that oil there? That's not supposed to be there. A mechanic guts it out on a remote airstrip in minus 40. We're gonna get to defeat this ship. And the C-46 crew faces the toughest landing of their lives. Horses, horses, horses. 